Yeah, so some people do have their own idea of what they want on a shirt. Uh, and so they come to me and say, hey, can you make this? And I say, yes. A lot of times I try to come up with my own idea. Like I take inspiration from everywhere, really. You know, if I see something like the Costco shirt, like I just like, oh, I can do that. You know, I can make that with respiratory therapists or respiratory therapy. Um, or I can do it with like pediatric respiratory. And so I just kind of, you know, throw my own little mix into something that's probably already been done, uh, unfortunately, um, but nothing's new under the sun anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's how I come up with my ideas for sure. Awesome. Oh. Hello, welcome to Scrubs Unzipped. Today, I am Anne Marie, and I have a very special guest. His name is Bobby. Can you say hi, Bobby? Hello, hello. So we met at work, and you are also a respiratory therapist. So can you tell the audience how you got started in respiratory therapy? Absolutely. Um, so really crazy story. I um met my wife in Phoenix, Arizona, and didn't really want to get into healthcare because all I knew was uh, doctors and nurses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she, you know, basically said, why don't you get into healthcare? And I said, absolutely not. <laughs> she, my, my grandmother's a nurse. My dad worked in a hospital. I just did not, that wasn't my jam. And so um, she said, well, you can do something else outside of nursing and doctors. And I was like, oh, like what? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she was in the medical field. She does um, uh, coding and billing, medical coding Ooh. and billing uh, for insurances. And she's like, well, you can do what I do. And I was like, eh, all right. Let me see what, you know, what, what that all entails. Um, then it ended up being um, not going to the medical coding billing, billing side. I ended up doing central sterilization tech at my school oh. in Phoenix. And, and that was just going to the school. And it was just a semester long and um, did not like that either. I didn't even finish the program because I just did not want to do that part. Um, so at my school, there's a whole listing of, um, you know, careers that you can do. And one of them was, um, nuclear medicine. Another one was ultrasound and then there was respiratory. And I was like, well, I could do ultrasound or even maybe nuke med. But at the time at my school, you had to be something else before you can get into the program, meaning you had to be like an RN or you had to be a respiratory therapist. Um, and she goes, well, why don't you do respiratory? You already have all these prereqs already done. You All you need is, I think it was English 102 and maybe one other class. And so I was like, hmm, all right, well, let me go ahead and, and get these prereqs done and and just get into it. And so got the prereqs done and then apply for the program. And then the next semester, the fall semester, I got into the program and 17 years later, here I am. Wow. It's been 17 years. Yep. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And my little 12, I'm still a baby. Hey, still a lot. You know, anything <laughs> over five is a lot. My eyes. So you started out in respiratory therapy. Like, was it, what you expected it to be like in the beginning? You know, <laughs> I didn't know what to expect really, because I tell you the first time I heard suctioning, I was done. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I was like, no, this ain't for me either. Um, but um, I will say respiratory has been good to me. Like it definitely wasn't what I expected. I, I think I really thought it was going to be more, of a teamwork type of thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, more times 
Well, it is still a team thing. There are times where it doesn't feel like we are included in that team. <laughs> mm -hmm. But but yeah, it's it's been good though. Awesome. So outside of work, what else do you do to balance like the stress of work? Yeah, well, um, I've definitely found a passion for uh, making t-shirts and jackets and, um, you know, hoodies, amongst other things. Um, so, yeah, I've been doing that uh, on the side, outside of being a father and a husband. Um, but, yeah, as you can see, I got my t-shirts in the background here. I see. They look great. Yeah, respiratory. Uh, Costco respiratory. <laughs> you are okay. familiar with Costco. Yeah, I go jackets. to Costco all the time. Yeah, a few jackets with RT on it, baseball jackets, a respiratory on the back. But yeah, I've been doing a few things, um, not just for respiratory, for nursing. I've done them for, um, who else have I done them for? Um, some of our techs I've done it for. Um, but yeah, whole hospital at Children's, seems awesome. like. <laughs> <laughs> so looking at the, like, there are different, like, people have a style. Like, how do you get, come up with the ideas of what you're going to put out? Yeah, so some people do have their own idea of what they want on a shirt. Um, and so they come to me and say, hey, can you make this? And I say, yes. Um, a lot of times I try to come up with my own idea. Like I take inspiration from everywhere, really. Um, you know, if I see something like the Costco shirt, like I just like, oh, I can do that. You know, I can make that with respiratory therapists or respiratory therapy. Um, or I can do it with like pediatric respiratory and so I just kind of, you know, throw my own little mix into something that's probably already been done, uh, unfortunately. Um, but nothing's new under the sun anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's how I come up with my ideas, for sure. Awesome. So when you started as a respiratory therapist, like, did you do you use like your creativity in your job because I'm a creative person as well and yeah. I know like everyone assumes like we're just like very rigorous and strict so how do you mix that creativity and bring it to work with you yeah you know I try to use things that we use in everyday you know respiratory life say for instance I made a shirt that says pop-offs um, <laughs> like a pop tart you know, oh, okay. um, um, brand. And so we all, under if you're RT or if you just work in, in the ICU or work with ventilators, you know what pop-offs is, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's how I come up with some things. Um, that's a little bit more difficult than just finding a design and putting respiratory therapy or pediatric nurse or nurse or whatever on it. Because, you know, there's not a whole lot of things that I can look around and be like, oh, yeah, I can use a term that we use in respiratory and apply mm -hmm. it to, you know, to a shirt or to a design, I should say. Awesome. So when you thinking, <laughs> so I know that you are in leadership. How do you encourage teamwork? in leadership and how do you have like a camaraderie around all of the other team members? Yeah. Um, in leadership. So I, and this is just me as, as a leader, I feel like you have to lead by example. Um, so I, if I'm going to tell somebody to do it, I better be doing it myself. Right. And so I, I, go around, I talk to people, I, you know, ask if they need help, you know, so I, I hopefully I'm showing people um, that are not in leadership, like, this is what you should be doing in your everyday work. Like, if somebody is, you know, struggling, you should go and ask and see if they need help, you know. Um, 
I I back my my RTs up when they have an issue with you know any any discipline uh, you know physician nursing whatever you know just going over and talking and basically trying to come up with a solution to a problem together you know um because you know we're here for to help people that's what I hope that people got into healthcare for that's what we're supposed to be doing <laughs> You know, um, so we we all have to come together to make those things happen. Yeah. That is so cool because when I started, like, I'm still pretty new. Everyone was very helpful and they asked me if I needed help. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, it's like a real teamwork oriented place. Right. And I'm glad and how do you instill like i don't know like you said you're a father so how do you instill like leadership qualities in your kids in my kids uh, you know i um i just try to tell them you know be be kind to people um be respectful um and, and like I said before, do things that, you know, do things that you don't be a hypocrite, basically, is what I'm trying to say. You know, uh-huh. like if you're going to tell somebody to do it, you best be doing it, too. And so uh-huh. and I think they're, they've done pretty good. All my kids are grown for the most part. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, they're all grown. They're over 21. So, oh, OK. Yeah, they're all grown and doing their trying to do their adult thing. So. But yeah, uh, I hope that they have picked up some of my qualities. <laughs> <laughs> so do, are they in healthcare as well? Like, do they want to be in healthcare? No, you know, no. They, <laughs> the babies wanted to, um, but no, they uh, decided to go a different route. So, uh, okay. okay. None of them are in healthcare. Oh, that's. Cool. Like not many, like not many people can be in healthcare. Like you have to have like a certain personality sure. to be successful, and you've done it for seventeen years. Like that. Yes. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah, it's still going, <laughs> right? So, what do you see like the future of respiratory of healthcare, like from? 17 years ago to now to like the future man it really depends on which facility you're working at right like Mm -hmm. our field we can do so much with it and i feel like we are limited um on what we can do depend again depending on which facility you work at um i can only speak for children's um you know if if we could incorporate more things that we do um as an rt that would be great do i see that happening maybe a few things maybe but you know time will tell and i think over the time um in my respiratory career i've worked at several different hospitals and like i said like they each facility do does things so differently when it comes to our field so I can't really see if I say if I've seen that progress or degress. I think it's kind of gone at the same speed. <laughs> it's kind of plateaued, you know. So, but so what? Oh, continue. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna ask you. Um, did you start out working with adults, and then now you work with children, or? No, actually, I've always always worked with children. Well, I won't say always. I went to um, uh, Reno, and I Mm -hmm. worked at a adult facility with, you know, a children's or PICU in it. Um, And I did that for two years. So I did both. And then when I went back to Phoenix after two years, um, I worked at another facility that did both, but I mainly was in the pediatrics. And then during COVID, I did do a um, stint (laughs) 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 Um, of adults um, Uh, at Northside. Oh, okay. 
So can you um, tell like the difference? Because I know it's like this, like respiratory skills are similar, but it's just mm-hmm. I don't, I can't put my finger on like what's the difference between taking care of adults and kids, even though we're helping them breathe, we're helping them all breathe. Right. As far as respiratory goes, I think it is pretty much the same. Um, the modes that we use and ventilation um, are the same, um, but as far as like um, volumes, you know, that, that can vary sometimes. But like I said, it's pretty much the same difference, especially if you work in um, PICU. I think PICU is probably the more comparable to adults than than all the other units. Um, it's an easier transition, I feel like. And I think that for me personally, I prefer kids because I feel like kids, you can see the appreciation um, in their face. You know, you, they can't talk. You can see it. You can see the relief when we're doing our treatments and, you know, suction them out that you could just see like, ah, oh, I can breathe. Right. <laughs> you know, or they go to sleep. Sometimes with adults, you don't get that appreciation. <laughs> You know, it's more get out my room, you know, all the things. It is, I mean, I'm not saying that all adults do that, but it just be like that sometimes where they just don't, do not care for you at all. <laughs> yeah, I can see, I can see where that can happen because some adults are like stuck in their ways and. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. everything has gone their way and this is like the first time where they can't do what they want to do right. and then right. kids like sometimes they they're born that way so like yes. like we 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 are the first ones they see yep. and they they see us all the time so i yep. guess that would be like the difference mm-hmm. okay so Most- what does no one know about you that's interesting um i mean some people know about me but not a whole lot but i'm from alaska you are yeah yes black people live up in alaska (laughs) what part of alaska valdez it's a very small town and if you're old enough to remember that big oil spill the exxon valdez oil spill that was Mm -hmm. in my hometown Oh, Um, wow. Not a whole lot of people remember that, um, but that's where I'm from. It's about a five-hour drive, five, six-hour drive east of Anchorage. So if we didn't have the mountains in the way, we would be a straight shot to Anchorage. Um, Because I actually did an assignment in Alaska. I was in Fairbanks. Fairbanks? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And it was like... north of where I'm from. (laughs) North away from. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So, how did you deal with like the winters in Alaska when it's well, all dark? You know, I was raised there, so I didn't know any different until I mm. moved as an adult. So, I was up there since I was two. Oh. So, um, yeah, I didn't know no different. You know, you just do what you had to do. They prepare you for it. Like you, you get your clothes that you need, or the shoveling stuff that you need, you know, and you just know that it's going to, especially my hometown, we got record snowfall. So you know that it's coming. Oh, wow. <laughs> you wow. just, you just do what you need to do. So. Wow. I did mm-hmm. not, I saw like, because um, in Fairbanks, they have the army base, so mm-hmm. that's where I saw most of the people come from. So, how did you come? How did you end up in where you are now, all the way from Alaska? Yeah. So, <laughs> my mom is from Atlanta. My dad oh, okay. is from Tuskegee, Alabama. I was born in Tuskegee, oh, okay. and so um, I know this area, um, but. When I was in, so I moved from Alaska to Phoenix, Arizona, and um, started my respiratory career there, and just did not, was not feeling respiratory. I had been there for about 16 years, and it was, you know, the family 
and I decided it was just time to move, time to get out of Phoenix. Um, so I actually applied at several different states. I applied in Texas. I applied uh, in Florida. I applied in uh, Tennessee. Um, and then I applied here. And this was the second time I came back to Phoenix after I did my little stint in Reno. Choa was the only place that called me oh, for wow. an interview. So <laughs> here I am. Excuse me. Are you okay? <laughs> Sorry. You're okay. It's okay. So here I am. Wow. And do you like it so far? Like, do you think you'll stay here? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Are you okay? <laughs> Yes. Yes, I think I will stay. I think we uh we found our home <clears throat> for sure. It was um one of those things like moving from Phoenix and you know sometimes you you go to a place and you just you just um you don't feel at home. Okay. And that's what Phoenix was. And so when we moved here, we bought our house, you know, I Working at Choa was my um was a good was a good move as far as like pay like I got a bump in pay and all that and so yeah I'm happy here like no issues whatsoever that is great so what is the so I want to talk more about your brand um, can you tell me the name of your brand again yes. As you can see, it's G Flex Gear. So the brand, like I said, basically it was. I started off as you know, just wanted to make some apparel for um, for everybody. Really, um, I wanted it to be an athleisure um, type of brand. Um, but as time went on, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna keep doing the healthcare route. And um, like I said, as you can see, I've got a whole bunch of like healthcare stuff. So. Um, so now it's just more like clothing for, for healthcare workers right now. So what are the trends that you see in apparel right now? You know, right now, <laughs> um, a lot of people are wearing like, what is her name? Taylor Swift. Right. And so right now mm -hmm. she's got this era's tour out. And so. That is a big trend right now. And so uh -huh. I do have a, did I bring it over here? Oh yeah, here we go. <clears throat> so I do have an Aero shirt. Okay. Right, and then on the back it has all the things that the PICU does. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, so and that's a big trend right now. So and it is definitely difficult to stay on trend but you know you just really have to be aware of your surroundings and be aware of like what's going on um to basically keep up because i'm old and and it's hard <laughs> you don't look old yeah i'm feeling it <laughs> you're feeling it so what keeps you like motivated to keep doing what you're doing and be on the grind. No, for me, I just enjoy doing it, you know? I just like coming up with different ideas. And I like to, when I make the shirt and I give it to somebody, I like to see people happy and like, oh man, this is cool, you know? And I'm like, yeah, I did that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so that's what keeps me going um, for sure. But yeah, outside of that, you know, just, it relaxes me. <laughs> How does it relax you? Um, because I'll be, you know, when I'm, I'll, I'll be doing a design. I'll print it out on my um my printer, you know, and it's just like, okay, I gotta do this, and then I go into my heat press and I press it onto the shirt and I look at it, make sure that everything's on, you know, everything's right on it. It's just I don't know, relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> 
So how did you learn to do all these things with like shirts and stuff? How did you learn how to do that? Really, YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, that's everybody learns how to do something on YouTube. I feel like. <laughs> <But> yeah. <laughs> have you have you thought about like teaching other people how to make art and apparel? You know, I don't. Not yet. I'm not at that point where I feel like I'm a master at it. Mm -hmm. I think I'm just good enough <laughs> right now. <laughs> you know, so maybe in the future. Mm -hmm. But yeah, not right now. I've only been doing it for know, three and a half years. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's good. That's yeah, really cool. good. So how do people find you? Like, do you sell online or is it like in? Yep. Uh, yeah, I okay. do online um, at gfluxgear.com. And then, um, you know, at at Children's, I walk around with my merchandise on for the most part. And, you know, that's how I advertise. So people will be like, oh, I like that shirt. And they'll be like, yeah, well, you can have one too. <laughs> <laughs> so... So yeah, online, um, Instagram, everything's G Flex Gear. Instagram, uh, TikTok, um, and then like I said, online is gflexgear.com. And then I don't know if you told me, but what is G Flex? So <laughs> my last name is Gibbs, so that's okay. where the G came from. Oh, and then okay. the flex really just I thought it would be cool to have like a, a slang term in it, so Again, I'm, maybe I'm showing my age, so I was like, oh, you know, you do flex, you know, you're flexing, okay. you know, okay. so. Because <clears throat> I, I don't know, I don't know if it was your website that you said that, like, you want people to grind, or is it someone wrong? I mean, sure, you can grind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, but I don't know if that was on my website or not. Oh, Okay. I don't okay. think it was, but yeah, that's really, for me, it was like, you know, you just, you're at work, you, you know, you got your apparel on and you just flexing on them. Right. And so oh, that's, okay. that's where it came flexing from. On. Like I said, just a little okay. slang. <laughs> okay. I got Maybe it. Maybe it's out of date. I don't know. <laughs> that's funny. And I... Is there anything else that you wanted to share with the audience? <laughs> okay, I'm going to do some rapid fire questions oh and um, it's going to be fun. <laughs> okay. okay, so if you were on a desert island, what three things would you bring with you? Desert island, water. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Water. A um, desert island. That don't make any sense. How come you didn't tell me that? <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about if you were at a desert. Okay, let's say it's a desert, not an island. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, what else would I bring? Gosh, something that would... I would have to bring some kind of tool. I don't know what that tool would be, but some kind of tool. <laughs> um, and maybe another person so I won't be alone. <laughs> okay, you want to bring a whole person with yeah. you, okay. Yeah. Why not? We're going to do this together. Okay. So would you bring your oh. wife? Yeah. 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 I don't know. Some people, they probably don't want to be on that desert with I mean, their she spouse. She probably wouldn't be want, want to be on that with me, but we doing this together. It's dead to us part, right? <laughs> That's great. Okay. My next question is, if you were on your deathbed and you had one thing you could say, but all the things in the past they wouldn't remember, but it was like your last words. What would you say? Ooh, that's a tough question. So if I was on my deathbed and it was my last words to say mm. just anything or something that they would remember or would not remember? 
well, they haven't, they won't remember anything you've said in the past. In the past. So like, got you, got you. So this would be like what you would be remembered for. Got you. Uh, what I would be remembered for, um, gosh, I don't know, probably some corny, like be kind. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That is good because some people are not kind at all. Yeah. So that's good. But I don't know if that's something. I'm, I don't know if I've said that in the past or not. I don't know. That's a tough question. <laughs> that's a tough question. Okay. Okay. I would do an easy question. If money were no object, what would you do? Where would you travel? Everywhere. Everywhere. Maybe not Antarctica, but everywhere else. But you were in Alaska. Yeah, exactly. Have you been back to Alaska since you left? Eight years or so. Do you still have family there? Yeah, my parents are still there. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So they love it there. They don't. Yeah, maybe. I I don't think they love it there. (laughs) They're trying to move, but it's hard. When I was in Alaska, I was surprised about the big mosquitoes. Oh yeah, the state bird. <laughs> Mosquitoes all the way in Alaska. Like, yeah, it's, a, really? it's very marshy up there, you know, the tundra and all that. So, yeah, they're up there. Well, Good thank you. Are only there for about four months. <laughs> yeah, I was there during the summertime, so it was mm-hmm. open mm-hmm. season. Oh yeah, you was getting ate up, weren't you? <laughs> <I was. laughs> And I have my, I would, I climbed like a mountain, some oh. mountain, and um, like I had my head, my head, like a net on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> I was looking crazy. It's all right. You had to protect yourself because they will come for you. Definitely will. Well, I wanted to, I did want to ask you um, what, I asked you what keeps you going, but I, like, is there a time where you were at your lowest and how did you come? As far as uh, with the shirt business? Yeah. Or in life. <laughs> I think we all have our low <laughs> points, right? Um, but, you know, for me, um, my family definitely keeps me going and keeps me grounded and keeps me you know, sane for the most part. <clears throat> and so, um, you know, especially with my first child, it was, I I wasn't an RT. I wasn't really doing the things that you're supposed to do, you know, as far as being able to take care of your, your kids. And so, yeah, there was a low point there. Um, <clears throat> but just taking care of her, and knowing that, um, you know, sh- she is loved and I, you know, loved by me, that kept me going. So, and then in a the t-shirt business, I really haven't experienced a low. Um, I think me, it was just more like, okay, what is the next thing to to, to scale up, you know? So, that's pretty- So, what do you want, like, your, the future of your pair of business to be? Do you want to expand into outside of healthcare or do you want to stay in healthcare? I, I mean, <clears throat> eventually, yes. I think I do want to um, relook at the at, at the athleisure wear um, side of it. Um, but right now, my focus is basically healthcare and then here in the near future, scrubs is where I'm going. So I'll be offering scrubs, hopefully, in the next few months. <clears throat> but we'll see. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Bobby, for coming on my small little podcast. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. And to all of the people in the audience, go to G Flex. Yeah gear mm-hmm. and um i'll put the link in the show notes and check out bobby's apparel it's really nice because i saw you wearing your shirt at work and i was like oh that's a cute that's a 
Thank you so much for being here.